for his albums. Um, that's ostensibly the point. That's yeah. all. That's all we really got. Uh, there's, <laughs> I don't really understand what we're doing here, but we're here. Uh, I do. I do. Uh, it is an excuse to hang out and record it. <laughs> that's fair. Fair. But it's also like you know a weird corner of media that hasn't really been explored for some reason and so we're gonna do it or the reason is it's because it's like daunting and no like journalist wants to take this on like vulture (laughs) is not gonna hire a full-time like music journalist just to follow fucking buckethead so brit yeah the reason is you and hoobastank established this a long time ago so did you just hoobastank me bro (laughs) (laughs) you got stanked bro that's that's really thank you thanks for hoobastanking me bro that's that's precious (laughs) Um, cool. So <laughs> let's start with the. That brings me back. <laughs> the, does it? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Honestly, you know what? One of the one of the first times I remember hating that song was when I was at the South Center Mall for the first time. I came down here for some reason with my mom. I was like 15 or something. Mm-hmm. And we went to the South Center Mall, we went to Nordstrom, and they were playing that song, and I was like, man, I hate this song. song. And I remember, like, <laughs> going outside just to sit outside so I didn't have to listen to the song. Oh. That's a precious that's memory. That's my that's stank minute. That's, no, that's precious. That's, <laughs> I love that. I, think, I, I like to imagine, like, young Spencer just, like, because Spencer, Sing honestly, he, he has always looked generally like the exact same human being. So I just yes. imagine like <laughs> just a small kid, but with like much shorter hair. Actually, I think at that point, didn't you have like a an M M&M and M haircut at one point in your youth? Uh, I did at one point, mm. not at that time. Oh though. bummer! No. <laughs> I really wish it was that yeah. time. But I did have I had the short hair and I bleached it blonde, mm. just like M M&M, and M, mm. and I wore like the baggy shirts, mm. the baggy. Pants. Wow. You know, it was it was two thousand two. It was a different time. You know, it was a great time. <laughs> It's a great time. Uh, well, speaking of which, guess who's back? Back again. <laughs> oh, shut up. Bucket's back. Bucket is. Tell a friend. <laughs> we have a friend today. Welcome. We do. Welcome, Ma- uh, yeah, Max. How great is that? Uh, Am actually, I your no. First let's, guest? Uh, let's. No, we have. No, we, we've had actually. a guest before, and we have another two guests Second. in in the works. Nice, nice. One, one booked, yeah, and one it's one true. actually a real serious guest which Ooh. is cool the, like a person yeah. who knows buckethead and who has worked with buckethead extensively that's amazing which, yeah it's gonna I be know. a fun one i know look at us <sighs> anyway Just we should uh, let's, uh, let's start up with this intro here uh spencer you sure. got your script up uh, uh uh-huh. max i'm gonna lead you through this so uh you you only have one line here um <laughs> it goes uh spencer starts hey i'm spencer then i say hey i'm brit and then you say, hey, I'm, and then say what we want to refer to you as in the show. Uh, you can say your full name if you want. I don't know if you want to go that far. Yeah. I don't care. It's up to you. No one listens uh, to but this. But then, so. yeah, I'm, I don't know. There's like <laughs> a guy in France who has downloaded every episode. That's great. Like, oh, that rules. Yeah. And a guy in Germany you gotta love also. The French. We've got international fans. Truly. We're, we're we're worldwide. We are bucket worldwide. We're like, we're like the pit bull of buckethead podcasts. Yeah, we got to do a live show at a at a, at a Walmart in Kenai, <laughs> or not Kenai? Where, where was it? I think it was uh, yeah. I think it was a uh, Walmart in Kenai. That that sounds no, like... it wasn't Kenai. It's that island off the coast of oh, Kodiak? Alaska. Kodiak. Oh, that's was it? Oh, yeah, we got to do a that, live show at Walmart wow. in Kodiak. Mm, that's beautiful. <laughs> I'm so glad he followed through on that. That's that's a that's a good thing. Anyway, me too. The pictures but, are amazing. I don't know when the last time you looked at that was, but incredible. They're really good. So Alaska, so cool. Pitbull, also in a way, he's a good man. He's all right. Yeah. What? Let's do it. Let's yeah, do it. Yeah. Go for it. Hey, I'm Spencer. And I'm Britain. And I'm Nax. Since 2011. <laughs> oh, 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 it's been two days last, last time. time with our last guest. Oh no! <laughs> I'm leaving this in just to shame you. Right. Can we? Can we? I even add thought you did it in the other says, order too. So. I'm just gonna put like three big already. spaces in between the and I'm Brit, and so you can <laughs> just think that. about it. <laughs> like, why is that? You should space put there? and you should put oh, and I'm in case guessed. I need to be courteous. All right. Uh, 
Okay. All right. All right. We can do this. We're we're real podcasting people. Okay. Um, hey, I'm Spencer. And I'm Britain. <laughs> and I'm Nax. Since 2011, Buckethead has released 284 albums in his Pike series, and we're going to listen to them. Three at a time. This is Getting Head. A bucket, a bucket cast. cast. Welcome, bucket bots, slogs, friends, and bucket heads. This is episode eight of Getting Head, a bucket cast. And uh, we've got a special guest today. Yeah, we do. Um, w- would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. <laughs> I'm Nax. Uh, I am a visual artist of sorts, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm mm-hmm. like a huge Danny Elfman stan. Do kids these yeah, days you really be. use the word stan? I do. Like, not ironically. I, I use stan <laughs> extensively. I no, I, I mean, yeah. I still listen to that song for inspiration. I really like the Dido sample more than anything. Um, <laughs> it's It's a good... It's a pretty that that sample slaps. Let's be honest yeah. about the T and the stuff. Hell yeah, I identify. <laughs> so, Britt, what's up? What you been doing? Uh, you know, working. Uh, you know, we just <laughs> yeah, working through a pandemic. Pretty cool. It's pretty feels good. Pretty neat, you know. Um, yeah. And everyone around here yeah. is like hospitalized and dying, and I work like kind of uh-huh. near the hospitals and stuff, and like. Sure. Lots Me too. of like stressed out doctors and stuff, and it's uh, yeah. like you know we give each other a look like, fuck the world, and yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hell yeah, fuck the world. That's all right. You know, all yeah. right. Classic. Yeah. About, Works going okay. What's, uh, what's 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 going on with you, Nax? Let's let's be courteous to our guest. What's going on in your world? What's I have uh, I have lost all of us. desires. And just mm, interesting. Just, so the anti hedonism. I'm just floating around. I feel like That's fair. <laughs> I've lost all desire and cool. will to care. <laughs> That's not exciting. Well, I mean, does anybody really want to care though? I feel like caring is like obligatory. Yeah, true. <laughs> but sharing it's, is caring. It's required. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Yeah. I try to care. You it's know, good to care. It, sometimes it works out better than other times. Yeah. As we do. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've been cleaning my house a lot uh, because lack of things to do during the pandemic, for one thing. Other other things, you know, it feels good. It feels good to get your space in order, get it organized, make things happen mm-hmm. for yourself. Buy guitar stands on the internet. Buy guitar stands. <laughs> you know, that's the thing you do. Regular stuff. You Paint do. your nails black, matte black, exclusively. Only matte black. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. You got to go gloss, yeah. dog. Mm, gloss. Gloss. Is yeah. Gloss is a pan. No. Good Anti-gloss. Never gloss. Anti-gloss. Anti-gloss. That's a hard stance, dog. I don't know if I can agree with that. <laughs> I just, I'm not a fan of shiny things. I like matte Do things. they have, like, know. matte black nail polish that's like the chalkboard paint where you could, like, write with chalk? Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I don't know so why sick. I just thought then, of that then you with could, Matt Black. Like, that would be sick. What what are some dope five letter words that you could write into your fingernails? Uh um, like uh <laughs> I don't know. Uh great. Great. That's that's a five letter. Uh, I got word. I got one for you. Durst. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> just I got red, I have a hat for that. Durst. It's over there. That'd be so sick. Boom. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. You know, living, breathing, walking. I don't Talking. Know. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes. Um, we recorded a podcast the other day, and I don't remember any of it <laughs> oh, because, is, is it because I was very drunk. Yeah, you were drunk, when we but we also it. did like a line of ketamine before we did the podcast too, which was uh, a cool decision. Uh, tr- Actually, it was before we listened to the albums before <laughs> we did the podcast, but it was you know it's uh it it sets a mood. Also, um, we had been hanging out for like 
six hours by the time we recorded the podcast and i was like completely out of things to say yeah yeah me too <laughs> so i'm like, like i don't i don't i, I don't really <laughs> want to see this person anymore like i know i know what what, what he's done since i last talked to him <laughs> like it's Definitely. we're good <laughs> like and then so like we yes. started talking i'm like what do i fuck and like oh uh, okay so here's the thing i am doing right now i am <clears throat> pursuing a refund with sony computer entertainment mm, right now what and i okay so i bought a game on the playstation 4 and i am extremely irritated with how long it takes the game to load it has the load times are just ridiculous and so i'm trying to get them to give me my money back my 14 dollars, and i fucking swear to you they will give me my <laughs> fucking 14 dollars back just because i'm not gonna wait two goddamn minutes for this bullshit game to load a fucking level <laughs> you know i don't have time for this shit right like what like who do they think i am you know it's like i i i work i do things i clean my home i have friends i have a podcast i don't have time to wait for this game to load okay i run a meme I page that's all right? so funny i hope you i know a lot of people that work in games and like that's like a big complaint that people have and like i know the reasons why games take a long time to load mm-hmm. also i don't play games at all so it's just like people Good. who make games explaining game games to me. It's fascinating. Mm-hmm. Don't know anything about it other sure. than that. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of reasons that go into that. This one is exceptionally egregious, though. It's nonsense. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight with them. They're going to give like me old school fight, internet. Fight. Mm, fight with Sony, dog. You, you get that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You get uh, that. Bitch you, better have my money. You, you fight big corporations they owe you they owe you true yeah, yeah. you owe me owe me oh indeed um, i think it might be time for a bucket fact oh wow you're not even going to give me the opportunity to forget i don't i, I don't it. think i am not this time because I, I did forget like i would have moved on in front of a person i forgot right, like <laughs> uh brit yeah Will you hit me with a bucket fact? I will hit you with a bucket fact, brother. Here's one that, like, I think I think we actually should have known, uh, to be honest. Um, so, since okay. the early 2000s, Buckethead has constantly collaborated with a guy named Dan Monty, who also uh, acts as his occasional touring bassist. Um, and Dan has, in conjunction with a character named Albert, produced all of the Pikes so far, hmm. which I I actually didn't know. I thought Buckethead had produced all of them, and Buckethead might be Albert. That's something we can get into later. It's a much bigger thing. Interesting. But Dan Monty is credited as a producer on all of the Pikes so far that we've listened to. Brit. Yeah. Are you implying that there may be a bucket conspiracy? <laughs> We've always known there's a bucket conspiracy. It's just how deep do we want to dig? Into the bucket. Straight up. How many pieces <laughs> do we want to take out of the bucket? I don't know, but I know those pieces know fit, let me tell you. The nature of the chicken dog. You know? So Dan also goes by uh, Del Rey Brewer. is a stage name. And uh, in the earlier Pikes, Brewer is credited with several electronic contributions. And so presumably Dan maybe does a lot of the drum programming and electronic stuff in here. I don't quite know because like Buckethead actually hasn't really produced like the full credits for anything. He's just been credited along with a person named Albert on the back of physical copies as the producer. Hmm. So. um, Something to look into. Suspicious. For certain. It is. I think it's interesting. It. It deepens the rabbit hole. It deepens the bucket, you know. Deepens the bucket hole. Really. Deepens the bucket hole, you know. It definitely does. How deep does the bucket hole go? Nobody knows. You gotta dig in there. Find out. Hey, 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 hey,
Have y'all looked at the website yet? Or talked about oh. the website? Oh, yet? we I don't know if we've talked about it, but we've def I've we've uh-huh. definitely spent time on it. Together. Yeah. It's uh, I was yeah, going down the rabbit hole mysterious. of that website. <laughs> it's I know, it's a rabbit hole. It's something else. He's got a lot of things going on. Yeah. Truly, truly. And and his music represents that. Mm-hmm. Uh, absolutely. Yes. Like, he's got a lot of, like, tributes to, like, people who died, who he respected. Yeah, like or that. Or either in, like, you know, like, boxing or basketball or, like, just, like, interesting historical figures um, or Bootsy Collins. He definitely has a weird thing for Bootsy Wait, Collins. Wait, Bootsy Collins is dead? No, he's not, but he still wants to like, <laughs> get a statue built the for Bootsy Collins. And in fact, I was gonna say, you know, like, what? He, I, I would have felt that. I feel like he he uh, my soul. he released a an album, a mini album called "Statue for Bootsy Collins." That was just like the proceeds went to like a fund to get a statue built for Bootsy Collins in like Cincinnati or something. Dope. Sounds yeah, great. It's really cool. If you had to fight to the death with one funk musician, what who would you pick? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. The probably future. Eddie Hazel. I would lose against every school. single one of them. <laughs> hey, you're give, you're not giving yourself enough credit, you know? Like, when you when faced with a life and death situation, certain instincts take over that you're not fully aware of. Wait, wait, wait. Are, are you talking like a funk musician in their prime or just like any funk musician? Because. Yeah. Whatever you want. Uh, I don't care. I, I mean, at this point, I feel like George Clinton would probably be a pretty easy fight. He's a big guy, but he's, like, really old and, like, has had a lot of health problems. But I yeah. wouldn't want to fight him because I feel like he's pretty fun <laughs> and funky. Yeah, he is fun and funky. And I, I can't think of a All lot of, like, above. can you think of, like, really toxic figures in the funk scene? I can't for some reason. Can you? I don't know. I don't know. I don't either. I was gonna, I was gonna say, what about somebody? But then I, they're a reggae musician, <laughs> so it's not the same thing. <laughs> it's definitely not a, the same thing. No, certainly not. No, no, no. no. Um, man, reggae sucks, right? <laughs> man. <laughs> now, if I had to fight a reggae musician, who? Let me tell you, there's a lot on that list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you'd want to I'll fight, fight a reggae all, musician, dude. like that's not. Come on, leave, leave them alone. They just want to get high and, like, play everything on the two and four. It's whatever. <laughs> okay. So. You ever you ever been in a fight, like a real fight? Not really, no. Been in, oh. I've been in a lot of karate fights. <laughs> a lot of karate fights. Ah, yes. It's a different kind of thing. But it is a karate. There's fight. this uh, there's this place uh nearby where I used to live in Shoreline, Washington, and it's called USA Karate, and I I just love the name of that. Do you, do you think they USA only karate. do Am- American and karate there? Like, USA. Their their logo is an American flag, and then just above it, it just says USA Karate. Really great. Made made me happy to see. <laughs> Fabulous. I feel like there's like a line of like patriotic karate places that I've seen as a kid. What is that? Uh (laughs) I don't know. There's like this desire uh, within like the American middle class to appropriate, you know, Asian culture and claim it's patriotic. I I, I don't understand. (laughs) But I mean, you know, everyone seems to be happy about it, I think. (laughs) I'm pretty happy about it. I like that it exists. I'll never go there, but like, I think it's. Do you still have your gi? I don't. I do own different karate pants now, though. Nice. I invested in nice. several pairs of Aikido pants because they got them wide legs. Yeah. They look like a dress. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um. Parachute pants. I've never worn some, but I would love to. Gauchos? Somewhat related. 
Is that what there's like these kind of uh, like loose fitting pants that are like really flowy and together they look like a like a skirt or a dress. They're called gaucho. Okay, gaucho Gaucho. marks. That's the thing. No, isn't that a movie? Gaucho marks is gaucho (laughs) marks. It's like a parody. Groucho Marx wearing gaucho pants. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Could be into it. I'd watch that. Oh, especially if it was no, like like um like Marx, the, the philosopher wearing those pants. That'd yeah. Be, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That'd be better. Daddy Marx. That'd be interesting. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Anyway, we um, listened to uh we listened to three more pikes this week. Um, oh yeah, we did. Heck yeah, we did. Gosh, um, we piked it up. We did. Uh, it was uh, pikes twenty two, uh, twenty three, and twenty four, respectively. Sphere Indeed. facade, telescape, and slug cartilage. Yes. Yeah. What? Uh, let's just start with sphere facade, released on September third, twenty thirteen. What'd y'all think? What a what a bunch of chaos, man. <laughs> like, he jumps around a lot. Yeah. It's, it, this one was a wild one. It was definitely very wild. He, um, <clears throat> he goes to all the places. He does. All the places. He did. I, yeah, yeah. What, uh, what, what do you think, Max? What was your... I like how it what, were, started off as like a carnival, and then we got shot into outer space by the end actually, of it. I'm sorry. Yes. Can we back up? We didn't ask you before before this moment. Before I asked you to do this, what has your experience been with Buckethead? Oh, <laughs> have you been aware of Buckethead? Yeah, is, I am curious about. Um, has he been on your bucket radar at all? Well, he was suggested to me a lot in college. Of like, oh, you're weird. Okay. You might also enjoy. <laughs> Buckethead, and I never, I don't know, whenever people suggest things to me, I'm like, I'll look into it, and then it just doesn't happen, so I guess I never listened no, to him happen. until now. <laughs> there. Wonderful. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, like, th- that's always a thing where, you know, if once you get into weird music, you get recommended <laughs> other weird music, but not all weird music is, like, the yeah. same, or, like, even somewhat similar to other weird music you're into. Right. Yeah, I think people just suggest weird music for like the aesthetic of the weird music. Like, oh, it's oh, kind of yeah. it that looks the same, but I'm like, it doesn't sound the same as the weird music that I like. I don't, I don't know. Yes. Right. That's real talk. Britt likes a lot of weird music. Britt and I have gotten into a lot of weird music together. We have over the years. I've never really gotten yeah. into Buckethead though until. Spencer made me do this. <laughs> I did not make you do this. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, no, no. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's real, you know. Real. He's interesting though. How do you? Well, let's hold on a second. Let's talk about Guns and Roses. How do you feel about Guns and Roses? <laughs> me. Yeah, I me. don't me have any GNR feelings towards take. Guns and Roses. You have to have some like no, 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 feelings. not even like I've never okay. listened to them. like li- you've heard. Welcome. I mean, to the yeah, jungle, I've heard like I'm the sure. top hits, okay. but I've never like yeah. November Rain, if you will, Sweet Child, yeah, yeah. Oh Mine, Classic. Oh, yes. Okay. So what what goes through your mind? You hear those songs. What what happens? I'm not You're into like, it. Is... <laughs> yeah. I mean that's that's the natural reaction, <laughs> but you know, did you know Buckethead was in Guns N' Roses? No. <laughs> yeah. Slaying those bucket facts all over you. Oh um, shoot! You want to spill this bucket? <laughs> <laughs> if you want to spill my bucket, uh, yeah. Uh, so B- Buckethead has done a lot of stuff. He did a lot of soundtrack work in the '90s and worked a ton with George Clinton. Mm. And uh, like Bootsy Ooh, Collins uh, from and, earlier, and Bernie Wall, uh, and they did like a bunch of soundtrack work for like the Mortal Kombat movie, um, the Power Rangers movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, fucking didn't they do a track on Biodome or hmm. something? Uh, there is a song on Biodome. I think I don't know if Buckethead's on it though. 
I want to say it's a George Clinton song with a bucket head thing on it, but but anyway, there's a the, there's a great George Clinton cover of uh, "Walk the Dinosaur" that's exclusively <laughs> on the Super Mario Brothers film soundtrack. Oh, that's a good that's one! Wow. Of fucking amazing. The music video so fucking good. I need to look that up. <laughs> I, I can't recommend that enough. He's wearing like dinosaur pants at one point. Although, it's like, really the, good. The original song <laughs> by Was Not Was is fucking incredible in itself. Like it, it didn't need to be That's covered true. like four yeah. years later for that film. Yeah, it it, did, it was like one of those really unnecessary covers where you like you ever see like covers of of pop songs that are like just a few years after the release of the original song and you're like they definitely had someone cover this so they could pay less for royalties yeah. Yeah. like every time i'm like yeah, yeah that's why they did that <laughs> yeah. uh, you gotta love the industry anyway uh back to yeah. sphere's facade uh, um god did we even start talking about this one yet yeah, we said it was wild. Uh, yeah, it was pretty wild. So I, I thought it was like sweet uh, wild of mine. There was a lot of like dubstepy parts to it, which I thought was pretty weird. Yeah. Um, a lot of electronics. Oh. Yeah, a lot of synthesizers. The uh, the percussion itself is very electronic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, no, I I enjoyed it. I thought it was okay. It was it was definitely like the weirdest one of the group. I think um, it's the most not traditional bucket metal you know what i mean it kind of is in the fact that like it, it sounds more like one of his regular albums in that like it transitions a lot from like a whole lot of different genres like from song to song and even within the That's song true. like um like uh even even in the first song like it starts out with like dubstep and then uh it kind of goes to different like short parts that are like really clean and then like really heavy again and it's like distinctly buckethead though uh, and then there's oh, a, yeah. a part at like 158 it's actually uh pretty distinctly beatboxed did you notice that yeah that uh, was weird. i remember hearing some samples some oh. like audio samples there, there's definitely something weird. with like a, a human like generated like snare drum like a kind of thing yeah uh, and he doesn't use like a whole lot of like human anything in his songs which i thought was kind of interesting yeah i have to say like going into it i i don't know shit about like music theory so i like i know that he's all about like being really technical and i kind Mm -hmm. of listen to music in a way that's like listening to different textures um if that makes Uh, any sense so like that's fair he's very clean like all of his stuff sounded really like clean to me i don't know if that makes any sense yeah um so i just kind of like listened in terms of like i don't know i listen in terms of like how music like will make me feel instead of like technicality so i feel like going into that this i was like i'm not gonna understand any of this (laughs) in a way that it should be understood if that makes sense so i was like it's so clean (laughs) well That's that's an interesting perspective, you know, and it's like I feel like especially when it comes to Buckethead's music, like I don't know if there is a proper way of like assessing that. Right. It's just it's whatever it makes you feel because it's all different and it's all weird. So, you know, true. Embrace that that weirdness (laughs) and you go with it. I feel that. Yeah. Um, I I liked all the so parts of this reminded me a bit of like 90s Japanese video game soundtracks Mm. in the sense of. Like you got you got the like very electronic drums, very like synth driven, you know. Yeah, yeah. I kinda of felt that on like um there's a song number two actually has like the biggest snare drum I've ever heard. <laughs> it sounds like a cannon. I don't know if you noticed that like halfway through the I song did it's that. just yeah, like yeah. it's very it's very loud. Yeah. After that it's just kind of a, a six solo and then there's like a dubstep part for a bit ends on like a reverby organ and that's one cool thing about this album is he actually like gives parts to just keyboards and he usually yeah, doesn't that do is that different. on albums. yeah doesn't do that too much no and he's like a good yeah. keyboard player so it's like it's good to hear him actually playing keys programmer programmer <laughs> we we know how this music is true true we do we're big enough dorks 
Oh, yeah. Uh, but but then he, he just, I don't know, this album relies a lot, I feel like, on synth envelopes for his guitar. Yeah, there's like a lot there's, of synth. Yeah, and, and it's just like a lot of synth guitar and a lot of like, uh, almost like dubstep guitar in a way. It's yeah. kind of strange. I mean, it was 2013. I mean, what, um, what yep, can you that's expect? That's true. That's true. Yeah, um, that was the time. The it was the time, right? Time. Uh, it's funny. It was kind of ending at that joke. time, wasn't it? Or was it just kicking off? I'm trying to remember. I'm pretty sure that's when it was the, the hottest. hottest. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps. I made a joke at work the other day. There's this one person that I work with. I like him very much. But he, the music that he plays at work, we, we have an area in the back where we get to play around music. And the music that he typically chooses to play is very much like dubstep or like bass-centric music. And... It just always reminds me of 2015. <laughs> like every time he's playing music, I'm like, "Wow, it's like taking a time machine back seven years." Cool. That's pretty I don't cool. Know. That's pretty funny. <laughs> it's not the worst. I don't but, think I could stand know. that at work. I would be like, "Turn it off, please." It's better than some of the music that my other coworkers play, which is literally just top 40, no, like no. the most basic <laughs> of basic. Like you cannot get more basic than the music that you used to play there. It's like, it's just kind of unbearable in its basicness. I love it when I, I ask know. like new coworkers, like, oh, what kind of music do you like? And, or they ask me what kind of music I like. And I'm like, I don't know. I like 80s music and jazz. I don't know. And they're like, I'm like, I don't really like uh -huh. like top 40s. And they're like, I don't like top 40s either. And then they immediately put on like a top 40s. And nice. I'm like, you don't have yeah. to lie to me. It's cool. But <laughs> <laughs> so funny. yes, exactly. Uh, I Oh, here's the thing that's been happening to me recently. I've been making fun of Red Hot Chili Peppers <laughs> a lot because that band fucking sucks. And People have been getting like legit Dude. mad at me, like actually angry at me for telling Dude, them that, that band excuse sucks. Excuse me, excuse me. Have you listened to their early <laughs> '90s material? Because it fucking sucks. It fucking sucks. I have a. I have a. Uh, so does their late '90s chili material. Chili peppers so and their boingo. Story. '80s material. Oh yeah. Oh, oh. You tell. <laughs> yeah, so, please spill, here spill your fucking peppers tea on it. They they suck. <laughs> But they were very right. influenced by Oingo Boingo. Um, well, some some that of makes it. sense. Um, among other things, but they toured with them and opened for them a few times. I'm not sure when, like mid '80s. And huh. well, back in the day, people hated openers, and of course they'd boo them off the stage. And so all the Boingo fans <laughs> were like booing the shit out of them, and. Um, I guess Flea, like, broke his bass or was, like, fucking around with his bass. And they were trying to fix it and stop the show. And <laughs> the fans wouldn't stop yelling at them to get off the stage. And Danny Elfman just nice. comes out of his dressing room in a bathrobe and shaving cream on his face, half-shaven. And it's just like, hey, kids, shut up. <laughs> I, I want them to be here. I like them. And then he left. And then they continuously booed them again. And that was it. <laughs> as, as, as they should. Those, those fans also, knew what was up. I mean, no offense to, to, to you and your love for Danny Elfman, but that, that makes me lose some respect for Danny Elfman because he likes the Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> he likes peppers the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Either. Yeah, what he the does. fuck? Come on. He's kind of an idiot. Cool. So. I think he could hang. <laughs> He's an uh, idiot. I, I mean, I'll admit it. He doesn't have good taste most of like, the time. <laughs> like, people feel like, people seem to respond in the way that, like, they think it's a hot take for me to say that Red Hot Chili Peppers sucks. But in my world, like, the people that I hang out with, that is not a hot take. That's it's just, just reality. Yes. Uh, so it's like, <laughs> the, you that's know. So, just like if someone was like, oh, my favorite band is the Maroon 5, Ugh. I'd be like, <laughs> wait, oh, really? Ah, loser. Really? No, you're so oh okay you're serious i've seen them live they're great um, <laughs> i have seen them live and they're great but you know what they're not good they're not good <laughs> yes you can yes. think about that they are all incredibly good competent musicians who all as craftsmen know exactly what they're doing of course. as artists they fail <laughs> on every level 
<laughs> I like it when the the singer dude got a bunch of like tattoos and started looking like a hardcore dude. Yeah, right. You know, he looks like, like the most generic hardcore Ken doll, though. It's so funny. So creepy. totally like there. Yeah, every time I think about the band, I just think about that dude with all his tattoos, like standing on the stage, being like, "This next song is called She Will Be Fucking Loved," and then they <laughs> <laughs> just go into that. It's like, it's like, I need to see half of you motherfuckers on this side of the room and half of you motherfuckers on this side of the room. All right, when, <laughs> when the chorus hits, I need you to run at each other. And then they just sing She Will Be Loved. Yeah. <laughs> Cringe. That'd be sick, dude. I would totally watch yeah, like, The Wall of Death to okay. She Will Be Loved. Yeah, I, I, I would. I would participate in a wall of death. Oh, too, I would. I would go hard for all of what songs for Jane. <laughs> yeah, I, I would mosh the shit out of the room. I would throw some bows. That's a good album. I would pick up some quarters. I would wow. mash some faces. You have no idea. No one fucks with so- me in the Maroon Five pit. When I'm in the Maroon Five pit, <laughs> it's the Maroon Six 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 pit. Uh, okay that's the name of the episode (laughs) maroon 666 (laughs) all right (laughs) uh wonderful almost dead so check your head it's a fundamental disconnect this life is not what you expect the show won't last forever even if you try but your soul is eternal let the ego die we almost dead so check your head it's a fundamental disconnect this life is not what you expect the show won't last forever even if you try but your soul is eternal let the ego die meditate on the state of the soul eternal to understand the plan of man you can look within for the answers mystique just you seek our eternal let it not be only sin to continue suffering in order to heal so uh pipe 23 tell us yes. released on august uh, 16th 2013 which is interesting because he announced it uh, after he announced Sphere Facade, but Sphere Facade was released on September 3rd. This one, which came after it in the series, was released uh, seven days before it. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, no, sorry. Weird. seven, eighteen 18 days before it? On August 16th. Weird. It's super strange. It is super strange. It's out of time. Um... Yeah, he's back at that baritone guitar again. He is. We're, we're getting heavy. Yeah, it's pretty shreddy. That's, that's my, pretty shreddy album. That's my first note here. Um, there's only one guitar solo in this in this album. Yeah, and it's at the very it's the end. Song. It's at the very mm-hmm. end of the album, and I thought that was pretty yeah. cool. What do you think of this album, Max? Um, I I like wrote a note for part like one song, and I just wrote rip, 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 rip. <laughs> 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 yes, that's pretty cool. That's yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so. uh, th- th- this one's a uh, much more traditional metal. Absolutely. For sure. We got some very some metal chuggy there. driving, lots of yeah. riffing, kind of just alt metal in general. Reminds me of like a lot of the alt metal from like the early two thousands. Bingo. Yeah. Not bad. Not great. Just. A... <laughs> it's got some decent electronic parts on it. That um, I don't know if that was Buckethead or his producer, um, Dan. Fuck this. Speaking of which, fact. we got to make a shirt where it's like just Buckethead's head, but his bucket is like a modular synth. <laughs> That'd be a fun That's shirt. Funny. He doesn't really use <laughs> for modular no one. Synth. Yeah, who, who? I would wear that shirt. Yeah, you'd wear that shirt. Make it for yourself. Don't tell 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 me we need to do that. That's your project. <laughs> Uh, yeah that's fair that's weird that this one got released before because I was like thinking them in order of like the last one sounded like you're going to space and this one's very space spacey I mean even the the cover is so Uh now in my brain I'm like why why would he do that Maybe he wanted to signify going to space or getting sent to space, being in space, and coming back and being sent to space again. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, think think about that. Uh, that makes sense. Bucket sense. <laughs> that makes sense. Bucket, bucket sense. sense. <laughs> um, yeah. So a lot of this reminded me of like 
I don't know, watching people punch, like is the the act of yeah. punching, mm-hmm. I think. I wrote down yeah. um this music reminds me of a time when I was hiding more violent thoughts. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Tell me about these thoughts. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Not going. No, it's okay. This is this is this is part podcast, part therapy. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> therapy, therapy for whom? I do not know. <laughs> I've already had therapy. Today. Mostly us. <laughs> oh, like for sick. real, nice. it's it's good. Um, I think I remember good. like you know, I had this therapy. this boss. I'll never forget. I'll never forgive him harboring violent thoughts for this very specific man and so are a bunch of other people that work there i could play this as a soundtrack while we beat the shit out (laughs) (laughs) i love that if you got to choose a weapon which one would you choose for the beating of course oh that's a good question i always like feel like my my work tools like my uh the porta filter from a espresso oh, yeah. machine. Those things are pretty heavy. Ooh. Um, <laughs> they are. Oh, yeah, that's got you some got, weight behind it. You got Pyro? You got Pyro Yeah, there? poisoning somebody. <laughs> dude, pour some Pyro on somebody. Dude, that'll eat their skin oh right off, dude. That God, shit's crazy. It's horrible. Like, I don't condone dude, to any of this. <laughs> all organic. So I was thinking about people getting punched <laughs> this one, um, a good bit. Um, so I started thinking about like people I wanted to punch, and like I honestly don't really have many people. That's, I want that's to punch. Yeah, yeah, the best. Yeah, no, you don't have many, but what? Who? Who are they? <laughs> that's between me and them, Britt. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they yeah. know. They know who they are. We'll talk later. <laughs> oh yeah, we will. <laughs> we'll talk with my we'll, fucking. We'll, we'll punch later. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you know, and I was trying to think, like, because we, we decided to make a thing of, like, thinking about rides that this music would, like, work mm-hmm. for. And, like, this works for any roller coaster. Kind, any kind of. of I think it, 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 its spaciness, like, makes it, like, best for something like a Space Mountain type thing. Yeah. Though. But it's a lot more, like, violent than Space Mountain. Like, if there was... Oh, what about violent Evil mountain? animatronics. Ooh, yeah. There we go. I love me and some like, animatronics. Yeah. What about animatronics punching yeah. each other? <laughs> just, in space. Pu- pu- <laughs> yeah, there we go. Pu- space Punch Mountain. Yes. Yeah. I love it. Uh-huh. Love it. Yeah. Punching space. Punching space. That actually sounds like a bucket head pipe, punching space. Punching it space. it does. It might be one. <laughs> I don't know. Is. We'll find out. Uh, we've got ma- we got literally hundreds to go. We do. So we'll find, get plenty of time to find out. We certainly do. Yeah. Um, Pike three of this week. Pike twenty four overall. Slug cartilage from September fourth, twenty thirteen. Uh, I love released, the title. Yeah. Uh, one day after Pike twenty two, uh, our first Pike this week. Sphere facade. Um, okay. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. This this one was was pretty good. It was super diverse. I liked the dissonance. Like, there's a lot of like dissonant yeah. parts. Yeah, so it was like kind of I... chromatic, but like very intentionally so. There was a lot of like interesting accidentals, uh, interesting like uh, triads and stuff like that. It was it was pretty cool. Um, and there was some some cool stuff in there, um, including like the coolest bass part I've heard on any of his songs on uh, uh, ooh, ooh. Pine Sap. Was it? We, oh yeah, 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 I wrote that down. Yeah, yeah it I was liked such a too. cool bass part, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Whoa, he's like taking it! Wow, he's really <laughs> pulling out his bass dick on this one." Damn. <laughs> I liked how liquidy it is. This one, it was really mm, like cool. I could, I could, I could yeah, see that. Okay. Flowy, liquid. Yeah, I like uh-huh. this one definitely the best out of the three yeah. we listened to, and it was also like the, I think the most metal, but also in a way the most buckethead of the three. Um, Very buckethead. It's sure. like. Yeah, it's it's grungy. It's alternative metal. It's it's uh, like really heavy funk. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's some guitar slapping in there. There is some guitar Pretty slapping. Uh, mm-hmm. The first two tracks are kind of like 
interesting avant garish metal. I don't know. It's it's just overall pretty good. I, I like this one quite a bit. Um, it also had some kind of like new metal-y elements to it, which I enjoyed. Definitely. We always love to see the new metal, I the bucket new metal. Love like it, bucket new metal. It makes makes me happy. <laughs> I, mean, I have a story history of, like, with West Borland eating like uh, KFC and like getting makeup all over him. And like, <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Man, his guitars have to be so dirty, West Borland. Mm, like, cause he wears right? so much makeup and shit. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's got to be filthy. Sweaty makeup, filthy, filthy guitars. guitars. Mm-hmm. That's probably why he plays yeah. like LTDs and shit. Just like LTDs are great. Don't 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 hate. No, they're but they're like they're not like n- really nice guitars. They're like I mean they're they're nice enough, but they're you know a thousand dollar guitar that you can like get for cheap if you're sponsored by them and throw away. Whereas like this if you're true. playing like legacy instruments, that I thought you he really was. Love. I thought he played Ibanez. I think it might play Ivan. You might be right, but still, you know, kind of the same yeah. thing. It's or a Schecter, it's, you know. Oh, Schecter. <laughs> yeah, you know, Schecter. Thumbs down. <laughs> a lot, a lot of a lot of like butt rock musicians play Schecter stuff. I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh yeah, they do. The Schecter's in all up in that butt. down, play Schecter. <laughs> Maybe like see butt down. <laughs> the the most butt rock guitar of all time though has to be the BC Rich Warlock. Like that- there, I've never heard worse riffs played on a on a guitar <laughs> than a bc rich warlock yeah, <laughs> like that, the, that is the guitar that is home to the rocking. worst possible guitar riffs <laughs> yeah although didn't um god i feel like uh, uncle jesse played one on full house <laughs> and he, oh, that rules. He, was a, he was a riff master all right you don't next do you know that on uncle jesse Uncle Jesse. So Next, master. you know that Brit used to be in a uh, <laughs> Full no, House themed band. In a, wait, in a what? <laughs> full House themed How? band uh, for what, years, what? actually. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, his band was called Danny Tanner's <laughs> Rainbow Militia. <laughs> was it like a like a fan fiction, but a band kind of? Theatrical. It, uh, <laughs> you could say that. So yeah, it's, it's hard to explain. Like we we took a lot of yeah we took a we took a lot of liberty with comedy at the time and uh, mm-hmm. you know we were we were pretty edgy. Oh, very edgy. <laughs> very very edgy. Edge lords, you know. Edge. You grew ladies. up in you grew up in Alaska. You got to be an edge lord. I mean, mm-hmm. you got to make yourself stand out. You know. Yeah. You gotta stand out till you notice me. In the words of uh, the live wire from from the Goofy movie, that's also a Mountain Dew flavor. Which which one? <laughs> live which, wire. Which color? A Goofy movie. <laughs> oh, Orange. Like, like <laughs> which color? You Mountain haven't had yes. a Goofy movie Mountain Dew. The red one, the blue one, the green one. There's... Do you remember the black one? Mm-hmm. I don't think I've tried that one. Mountain Dew Pitch Black. Mm. Sounds nasty. Uh, it was not a cross. Yeah, it was. It's not. It was not a cross promotional with uh, the film Pitch mm. Black. That would have been uh, awesome. Un- like, unfortunately, like Riddick flavored. Oh, <laughs> oh man, that. just tastes like sweaty bald man. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> the harvest of the like- sweat. Vin Diesel looks like he probably smells really good. I'm gonna be honest. I bet he does. I bet he's really clean. Actually. Yeah, no, I, th- I bet that guy like grooms a lot. I bet he smells mad good, straight yeah, up, yeah. mad good. Mm-hmm. Who do, who do you think's the best smelling like celebrity? Like, give me your give me your top top smelling celebrities just based on how they look. Oh, good question. I suddenly don't know any celebrities. <laughs> That's the way brains work. <laughs> What's a celebrity? <laughs> I don't know. Someone, someone uh, you d- like in anybody the world. who's not Ozzy Osbourne. So, mm. Someone you know because of what they do. It's true. Hmm. No. Hmm. Least smelly. Look, I'm gonna say the antithesis of this question is Rob Zombie. <laughs> Rob Zombie smells like a crust punk's pants. <laughs> yeah, I could imagine. He has to. 
Oh, God. Rob Zombie is a crust pants <laughs> pants. He is. He's like the musical equivalent of that. Uh, I'm just uh, visualizing him money, like hugging a crust punk's legs and then trying to like walk with Rob Zombie <laughs> attached to them. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I just like to imagine the, we're getting the on dragon. the train. Come on, let's go. <laughs> yeah, it's like stop dragging. We stop the dragon. <laughs> I actually listened to Dragula a bunch of times. It's pretty sick. Over the last yeah, couple of days, I, I I I listen to Rob Zombie once every year or so, and I'm like, Rob Zombie's pretty sick, and I hate to admit it. <laughs> um, I know. Like every time I watch like his music videos, I'm like. Yeah, okay. That's like, All right. I get exactly yeah, his, what he's doing until he starts great. directing yeah. films. I'm like, mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But, you know. He's like, he's like the butt rock Marilyn Manson. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. He's like, yeah. Marilyn yeah, Manson like, is I mean, I was butt gonna say, rock. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was going to say. I mean, he, I was exactly, he is, I was going to say he's the Marilyn Manson for strippers. And I'm like, <laughs> but Marilyn Manson is for strippers. Marilyn Manson is definitely for I know some strippers who dance to Marilyn Manson. Exclusively, oh, I, <laughs> as you every, do. E- no, every dancer I know has danced to Marilyn Manson. Yeah. Like, and like yeah. I, I always have to quiz them on like their their dance playlist because I just have to. Marilyn know. Manson and honestly, Nine Inch Nails. Uh, yeah, Rob Zombie. You know, you just you hit the big and three. The, the, and and then... the thing is, like, I know mostly dancers who have at one point like worked at Casa Diablo, and so like inevitably it's gonna be those. <laughs> specifically yes and then yes. you know like also like uh of course like danzig mm, yeah always danzig. danzig one of the first like really? three danzig albums wow. they're all strip music for sure like um, really okay all right yeah i'm gonna take your word for it but mm. that's interesting to me yeah. always always some edm always some some like soft piano music if they want a soft song Gonna have this soft song when you're gonna want to get intimate with a pole. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yep. Slug Cartilage is an album we listened to. And Slug Cartilage it was, okay. was uh, pretty pretty cool. And then we're still talking about yeah. it. Uh, it did make me think about yes. slugs. And cartilage. It did, not, did it make yeah. you think about slugs? Uh-huh. It was. I I felt it really evoked the slug. Slimy, you know, mm-hmm. sliminess. Just like goblin like, energy. Like, goblin. There you go. It was like, it yeah. was pretty bass heavy and pretty down tuned. Um, you think goblins are slimy? I guess they're not. They could be. I'm a slimy goblin, I mean, so they could be. I can't speak for all goblins. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I uh, mm, guess I don't know. I tried playing this game the uh, like a couple of weeks ago, and it's like a Lord of the Rings game. Mm-hmm. And in the game, you're killing orcs, and the uh, the animations are so violent but of like, like killing these orcs, like and I mean, like that's fine, right? But the the problem with it is like the like orcs are sentient beings. Yeah, like and orcs are like they're just like dudes. Class. Like, like, yeah. like, like, all... what? like so th- they'll like have conversations with you, and then you will literally like rip off their arm and like shove it down their throat mm. and stab them a bunch of times. And it's like sounds pretty hot. Like damn, dude, honest. like that's harsh. Mm. <laughs> like we live in a society, apparently. <laughs> uh, but, like a spectacle. You know. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, so uh, Slug Cartilage was was pretty pretty fantastic. It was kind of all over the map, um, kind of like like every everything else here. Yeah, um, like oh, we, yeah. these three albums were all there. There wasn't a constant direction. I don't feel to any of them. If anyone like Telescape was definitely the yeah. most, and that was like pretty straightforward yeah, metal most, for like, a lot solid. of it. Okay. Yeah, you know, uh, mm-hmm. but I did. I don't like. I I actually do not prefer the solid Buckethead albums unless they're like solidly acoustic, like we've mm-hmm. seen before, or solidly like ambient, like we've seen before. Solid head. Solid head. 
Solid head. <laughs> Solid head. Um. Yeah, th- this one was pretty cool though. It was it was more avant garde than a lot of the offerings we've seen. Um, it's mm-hmm. it's one of the better ones I've heard since like I'd say like Pike Thirteen, straight up. It was, you know, for being a twenty four, that's 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 pretty good. That's pretty good. I'll say this one Heck yeah. might go on my top three. Maybe I'm not sure. Wow. I'd have to go back and look. Strong words. Strong. I uh thought it was all good. I enjoyed all I enjoyed all three. Uh mm-hmm. as you said, yeah, uh more uh, avant-garde, especially like the first one mm-hmm. and the last one. Fuck, I can't remember the names of these things, man. Um um sorry. Slug cartilage uh, so was sphere, the last facade one and sphere facade and was, slug yeah. cartilage absolutely. Mm-hmm. Very avant-garde. Yeah. And that's nice. Uh but I also I like the more solid stuff, right? Like I, I like the, the straightforward metal because like I am a straightforward butt metal aficionado. Uh, aficionado I love it. I mean I got my butt metal guitar <laughs> right here. That so like I'm ready to metal. fucking rock and rumble all day every day. So anytime I hear like so there's a song uh on uh 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 what's it called? Telescope Telescape. Mm-hmm. There's a song on Telescape that has like a gallopy riff where it's like dun 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 dun. Oh no no yeah yeah yeah. So so and, like, uh, both. I was listening to that and I was like, yeah okay, super... I can like. So so track two was straight up power metal, uh, for yeah. for mm-hmm. a little while yeah. and it was awesome. Uh, yeah. Because I love power metal, as you may know. I um, know. I mean, specifically, I know, I know better I stand than I early think anyone knows. In a way, <laughs> you can't. You just can't understand. And I don't understand. Next, Britt and I played in a band together when we were teenagers. And in this band, Britt would uh, take off his shirt for performances and he would oil his chest with baby oil. And he, at one point, had uh, gauntlets. Um, oh my God. <laughs> and it was really great. Um, we did cool things as teenagers, let's just say. Very That's cool great. things. Yeah. The being in bands is pretty cool. If you're a loser. Never been in a band. Yeah, I mean, can't it say. doesn't. It's like, it's not gonna that make means you're you, cooler than us. It's not going to make you a bigger loser. That's, uh. It's all right. Yeah. Uh, running a meme page, though, is just being in a band for 2020. Oof. Yeah, I did that yeah. for a minute. Running a meme oh, yeah. page. For the two people oh, yeah? that look at your meme page. <laughs> yeah. It can be fun. Yeah. Yeah. The the problem with memes, or not necessarily the problem, but like the struggle, the eternal struggle is because like as your taste becomes more and more niche, you want to you want to explore that. You want to explore like the those parts of things that like really make yeah. you laugh. But that is not always universal, you know? And it's like, in some cases, it's just the things that make you laugh are so obscure that no just one gets it, it but you. I just make niche memes to make niche memes. <laughs> I, like, never make it Same. to be, like, yeah. identifiable to anybody. And if one person gets it, no. then I'm, like, cool. Like, like yeah, that's all I like wanted. I made, a whole, <laughs> I made a whole series of Alan Ruck memes, <laughs> and nobody wanted a single one of them. They are, like... Nobody wanted a single one of them. They were, You're just liking your liked own memes. Any of them. I think my brother liked it. That's it. That's like, because he was the one who like pushed me towards it in the first place. I'm like, all right, this is for you. That's great. Would someone else will get it? No one else got it. <laughs> like, I got it, but I was like, nah. Yeah, I you're like, yeah, I'm going to save my electronic likes, my thumb muscles for... <laughs> Mm-hmm. Something better. Mm-hmm. Whoops. Skip past that yeah. one. It'd be like that. Ruck you. <laughs> So we do a thing at the end of the show. We talk about 
we have a space, a safe space, if you will, to talk about things that we think are cool and that other people should enjoy as well. We ask people to recommend us things. We recommend each other things. Um, do you have anything that you would recommend? Anything. It literally doesn't matter what it is. I thought of that when y- y'all were saying that, and I don't know what I'd recommend. Oh, you know what I'd recommend? <laughs> oh, um, ready. As I, as I get into my hyperfixation of, of being obsessed with one old man at a time, um, I continuously watched a bunch of Peter Lorre movies, like 20 of them now, I think. I should have a podcast just for that. I don't wow, know why I haven't. You yet. should, because no one else watches that many Peter Lorre <laughs> movies except for Peter Lorre archivists, right. which are all dead. But you're, right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but there's one movie that uh-huh. I keep recommending to everybody. Like, I'll rec- Like customers will come into my work and they're like, I'm bored. I don't know what to do. I'm bored of quarantine. And I'm like... Peter Lorre, go watch the movie M by Fritz Lang. It's on YouTube for oh, free. Yeah. Everyone should watch this That's movie. Good. I keep recommending it to strangers. Mm. I'm like, everybody it, needs to watch this they movie. They have a really good restoration on Netflix as yeah, well. Yeah, it's probably better on there, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so I actually watched some of your story <laughs> posts about Peter Lorre. Because I, a lo- a like, I, I had seen you talking about Peter Lorre, and I was like, I have no fucking clue who Peter Lorre is. Uh, so I watched them, and eventually you explained who Peter Lorre was and his influence in the world of art and media. And I was very surprised by that because a lot of the media that you reference is like things yeah. I'm very familiar with. And I was like, oh, so like that's the archetypal like weird guy yeah. uh, that you see in all of that 90s animation. And uh, yeah, it was really interesting because I never understood what that was referencing, and like I still I like, barely <laughs> do, which is so weird. Yeah, he's like been uh, transformed really... into like a cartoon. Like he's cursed to be eternally like a cartoon. Him and Cab Calloway. Cab Calloway is the other person that's like eternally cursed to be a cartoon man. It's bizarre. I'm like, what is this? I haven't watched it. What do you have to recommend, Spencer? What do I have to recommend? Uh, that's a pretty good question. Um. Oh, okay. I got one. Hello. Oh shit. Oh. I've been uh I've been on a mission lately, uh, to clean my house <laughs> and to make it make sense. Feng shui. And it's hard. Like organizing your things is difficult. <laughs> like having things is difficult. Just collecting um, things. Truly, truly. Uh, what I would recommend is go to the hardware store. I mean, maybe don't like if you're if you're trying to avoid people, but like if you have a reason to go to the hardware store, go to the hardware store because it's the best. I love going to the hardware store. It's so exciting. You can buy so many different types of screws. It's amazing. Um, big fan. Uh, go to the hardware store. Buy some screws. <laughs> buy some wood. Cut that wood. Make shit. Like glue it to your Ooh, yeah. wall. I, I don't know. Do I wish shit I could with glue it. Shit to my it's wall. recommended. I would totally build like my own shelves and stuff. No one's stopping it's you. True. Uh, except your oh, landlord. Also, well, if you're gonna mm-hmm. put shelves on your wall, don't glue them to the wall. Mount them to the wall using a bracket. Like that's yeah. Gonna be get a whole set up doing it. But uh, but still, I have like a it. really old like yeah. my my building is like solid brick. <laughs> so it's like figuring out how to like mount something on with solid brick. It's like this building is so old. I don't know how I would. I'm sure there's a way. Um, it's like drilling through the bu- the building I live in. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Uh, the the building I live in is from 1905. It's very old, um, which brings with it its own set of challenges. Like there's only two outlets. Or there's one outlet. It's like two plugs, right? There's one outlet that I can plug like modern devices into. Like none of the other outlets provide enough power to power like anything, (laughs) which is interesting. Just everything on one plug. (laughs) Yeah, I literally have like I have everything on one plug. I have uh, let's see, I have six surge strips plugged into that (laughs) that one plug. Um, Wow. 
You got it. Yeah, my house has two in my I live in like a studio. It has like two of the plugs in one room, but on like one side of my wall, so I have to like feed everything towards the other wall. It's so weird. <laughs> Just all in this It's very weird. Brit. Yeah. Hit me. What you got? Oh, well, if you're watching this podcast online, because I might post it online eventually uh, <laughs> with a video, um, you can see I have this, uh, my, my room looks like uh, My Bloody Valentine's Loveless, because yeah. I have invested in um, someone I've been seeing lately. It was like, I, I can't believe like all your lights are just so bright. And I was like, what, what do you mean? And they're like, I mean, haven't you ever heard of bisexual lighting? And I was like, <laughs> oh. bisexual lighting? I don't, I mean, I'm I'm into this idea, but I have not heard of this. It's been around a while. Um, okay. I, I, I can't believe I haven't heard of this. So and I'm like, I mean, it's all, it's all just like colored, li- like layered lighting everywhere. And I'm like, yeah, that is, that is pretty gay. Yeah. Like now that you mentioned it, and I don't know why, like, I mean, I light, ev- well, here's the thing, like, for a while now, I've lit everything with candles, which is perhaps gayer. Candles are I mean, great. that's like, that's gay vampire. Th- like, that's like Victorian I mean, gay. <laughs> I am, I've got, you know, yeah, candles going all the time, everywhere. I left all of my lights on, so you don't get to see my, my by lighting, which I kind of have. I don't know. I have like my big blue orb in the background. Yeah, I don't have any orbs, but I do have like an LED strip that I can change the color on, which is quite nice. And I got these like Christmas lights, I guess. I don't know. There's, there's a name for them. String, String lights. lights. Whatever. Yeah. Christmas lights. Mood That's lights. cool. Yeah. I like some good mood mm-hmm. lights. Mood oh, yeah. You got you to gotta have good lighting. Lighting's critical. You know, it creates the whole mood, sets the whole mood, you know? You got to have it. So, Britt, you're recommending what? What exactly are you recommending? Mood lighting. You're recommending like invest in or lighting, colored lighting, or I'm actually uh, recommending like smart lights. Yes, uh, is what I got. Yeah, you can. I, I have a ton of them around the home. I uh, can control them with my Wi-Fi. Nice. You Those got them set fun. up with a uh, with HomeKit. Sorry. You got them hooked up to your HomeKit with your phone, so you can yeah control them with yeah. Siri. So I can control them. Yeah, with uh, Siri, um, Amazon, or Google. Nice. And so I can just walk around my home yelling at things, telling them to change the lights. <laughs> yelling at the little boxes pink, that listen blue, to you pink, and you're blue. like, hey! <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, and I, I always forget which one is which. They're like my... Ch- and it's, it's interesting because they're like my children now who I forget their names and I'm like, I forget which one is Alexa and which one is Google sometimes. <laughs> mm-hmm. And um, What gender is Google? You know, uh, uh, so I have Google. I have Google is definitely like an AMAB voice. It's like, uh, wait one second. Hey Google, set alarm for five forty-five a.m. Your alarm set for tomorrow at five. Nice. So Google's a dude. Okay. Here, I set Google up as a dude, but Alexa is definitely. I gendered. I gendered my devices. Why did I do that? <laughs> and they're already gendered. Yeah, somebody did it. I know. I, I I made this one gendered because I I I feel like it came gendered as female, and I'm like, I don't know. Maybe there's too much feminine energy. Like I put my now. iPhone as like an Australian like I want... man. I don't know why. Or maybe it's British oh, now. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, I, I don't know why. I always change them to Australian I, I like this accent. I'm uh, like, you're an Australian now. <laughs> but you got to say mate a lot or else it yeah. won't understand what you're saying. <laughs> Dude, I, I get messages from people uh, on Instagram sometimes from Australia. And the way that they they type is the way that they talk. Love and it. Yeah, there's a lot of mate in there. Like they'll, they'll use mate like multiple times in one sentence. Which is always fun. I love Australian <laughs> I love hearing that. <laughs> accents. <laughs> Me too. So good. They have a lot it's of R's. Great. It's just like, no. Uh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Can't do anything else. Just, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, right. oh, wow. That's great. Yeah. 
If you're listening to us from Australia, Fantastic. thanks. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm sure there's better content out there. You probably do not listen to Bruce Hornsby, bitch Said you don't pump that Hornsby And you know you probably should You know I'm pumping big swing face When I roll up in the hood And the reason for my rhyming Is the best of all the time You know he do And his thing with the piano He would go play that funky shit Uh-uh We tight like Brooklyn's and Brooklyn's You're going hard on those Trulies, huh? Oh Now this is a, um I don't know if I've talked about this at all before D sode, but was it D sode? I do. It's really just the hard do that I do now. I only really do the do any hard longer. do. <laughs> um, I drink about three or four of these a day at work, um, and that's just kind of my thing. And people wow. talk about me doing the do at work. That's <laughs> that's the character I've um, made myself. I'm the doer. Do or do not. There is. Mm, mm. Heck yeah. Heck yeah, dude. Love to hear it. Yeah, what you're looking at there. You can just get a sext. Uh, no, I was looking at my fucking work schedule and I can't figure out what time I work tomorrow, so that's fun. I don't know. Bad. Yeah. yeah. How can you not figure that out? I don't know what time I work. Mm, do you work? Or do you Maybe slave? You uh, well, no, that? we're all slaves. You know, we're all freaks on the leash to capitalism. My leash is literally my hair. It's so long. It's, it's a struggle. <laughs> I have an anti-recommendation, a thing to not do. What was this? Uh, I don't wait for video games to load, dude. Just do something else. <laughs> okay, book. it feels bad. Yeah, yeah. Do anything, mm -hmm. anything, but wait for the video yeah. games to load. Like, don't stare at that screen. It feels bad. You play the bad game. Screen. Playing the game is fine. Yeah, bad. That's bad screen. There is such thing as good screen, which is maybe there is good screen. Maybe watching Peter Laurie on YouTube. I'm not sure. Um, but <laughs> there is good screen. There is bad screen. Bad screen is waiting for video games to load. If you're wait, if you feel like you're waiting too long for a video game to load, just do something else. Take your pants off. I don't know. Have fun with it. <laughs> Li live it up. Yeah. Taking your pants get off. Get a snack. Get alternative. Yeah. Get a snack. Drink some water. Do mm -hmm. a stretch. Do a stretch and then say, oh, big stretch. Say that to yourself. It'll feel good. <laughs> Phil, thanks for the anti-recommendation. It, it was an anti-recommendation that turned into a recommendation. It's a good recommendation. Yeah. That's, how, that's how it should be. Yeah. yeah. You take something. Positive vibes. Yeah. You take something negative, you spin it. I'm a spin doctor. Yeah. It's fair. Like the can, band. Can I give an, uh, an anti-recommendation that really just brought my day down? <laughs> yes. Um, so at work, someone put on the um, Arcade Fire radio station. Oh, fuck oh, that. No. Oh, no. no. <laughs> fuck all that. I just don't do that at all. And so I'm, I'm in a weird place today because... <laughs> That's I understandable. Mean, I, I can't stand Arcade Fire, and I, I won't go into that, but like... Arcade Fire tangential music is also usually about as bad, and there was some good stuff. Sometimes they played like some cuts off of like uh, the Flaming Lips soft bulletin, which was nice. Wow! And you know some. I feel like the radio stations on like Spotify or Apple are always like, "What did they recommend? Like who?" Algorithmically it was, it was generated bad. these. It was, but it oh, was yeah. so much arcade fire, and it made me much. just like want to eat all the expired goods so I could go home early. You know what that? <laughs> you know what that band makes me want to do? It makes me want to set fire to an arcade while I'm in it and burn to death instead of listening to <laughs> the music. I feel that, but why like do that to those video games? They're <laughs> innocent, like. <laughs> <laughs> I do it. I do it at it's an poetic. Arcade Fire concert, 
And it would be like the most pure eugenics ever committed on America. Or Canada, for that matter. Are they Canadian? Are they, they're Canadian? Yeah, they're like from Montreal. Oh, I bet they are. Why do I know this now? You yeah, know why wow. I know this? Because I know some Canadians who are fans of theirs. It's They would be. It's yeah, a thing. They <laughs> I bet they're like fucking like artisanal like uh, leather pocket protector makers or something like that. <laughs> That's okay. very I'm gonna, close. I'm gonna shit yes. on your friends. <laughs> very specific. I don't know these people will fuck them. Oh yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't want to hate hate listen to them now. Like yeah yeah yeah. Listen to them. Just start a big list on your phone. Write all the the bad thoughts that come into your brain while you listen to Arcade Fire, mm-hmm. and then talk about that at therapy. Yeah. The therapist would be like, we're doing this again. <laughs> <laughs> this, is this a yearly thing now? Or is it just every year. <laughs> I hate Arcade Fire, here's why. I just do that with other artists, but you ever, not Arcade Fire yet. <laughs> do you ever have people in your life where like something weird like happens between you and them, and then like you reach out to them years later and like try to like patch things up or whatever, like or just like reach out, you know, and be like, hey, I'm sorry that thing happened to us while ago you ever have that but then like you do the thing like you do the reaching out part and then forget and then do it again and then like you talked to me about this last year (laughs) has that ever happened to you did you do that i hope you did that (laughs) Uh, i don't think i'm sorry that that we disconnected yeah yeah again (laughs) enough of a dork that could happen to me I hope it does. I really like, I, it I does would definitely do that on accident. Oh, yeah. Mm. Like, oh, yeah. sorry. It's the thought that counts, I think. Yeah. I've definitely done the, like, new ho- new phone who dis to people, like, multiple times. in hi- This was a long time ago, like, in high school. Mm-hmm. Like, when you get a number from somebody and they're like, Merry Christmas. I'm like... First of all, who does that? Second of all, new phone, who this? Yeah, there you go. You know what's wild? Like, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, I have a friend. Britt knows this friend, Mr. Andrew Jamieson, who may eventually be on this podcast. He got a new phone like recently, like I like, got like six months ago, and was like, I lost all my numbers. And I was like, dude, what the fuck? Like, it's 2020. Ow. How does that even happen? Contacts aren't even Ow. stored on your fucking phone, bro. Like, what are you doing? So I sent them, like, a bunch of messages. I was like, bro, like, really, like, explain this to me. Like, what the fuck happened? How like, did you lose the number? Yeah, like, it's impossible. Unless you, like, went into your email account and manually purged them. Like, what the fuck is going on? I don't know. Maybe he had a weird ex, man. Sometimes we have weird exes who do weird things with our phone information, dude. Oh, uh, Yikes. Just saying, just saying, sometimes some of us do. <laughs> uh, not me, but some of us. Bad. Yep. Yep. I, I just, if, when I run out of things to say, I just smile into the camera. That's exactly what I do, too. That's, that's all bacon. there is to do. Uh, all right. Do we want to wrap this up? Yeah, now? let's wrap it up. All right. So, uh, the. This has been Britain. And this has been Spencer. And this has been Nax. You've been listening to Getting Het, a bucket cast. Stay greasy, bucket heads. Namaste. Namaste. There you go.